So Octavian, what we're going to do today is talk about your ticks a little bit. Okay. And we're going to try to teach you a way to help uh, manage your ticks, how to tell, how to control them a little bit. Okay. So we've talked a little bit about a lot of the different ticks that you're doing. Yeah. Um, can uh, you tell me one of the? You said one of the ticks that's happening a lot is something you do with your fingers. Can you yeah. tell me what you do there? Yeah, I do this one. Okay. Can you? Um, Tell me about that a little bit more. Like, what do you do? Yeah, I like, um, you know, when I see an animal in real life or when I watch a movie or when I look in a book, that's what happens. That happens when you look in books and watch movies and see an or animal. Or look at things. Or look at things. I noticed before you started, you, you were doing, doing that um, when you were doing writing math problems, it looked like. Yeah. Is that another time you do it? Okay. Um, no, can you tell me, do you ever do this? What do you call this when you, this movement? Do you have a name for it? No, I don't have any names. Okay, let's, should we call it your finger thing? Does that make sense? What, the finger thing? The finger thing, would that be a good name for it? Because we have to be able yeah. to talk about it. Okay. So when you do your finger thing, do you always make that noise with it? Or does the finger thing ever happen separately from the noise? separately from the noise. Yeah. Do you ever do this without making the noise? I used to, but not anymore. Okay. Would you say that's true? Does she, does he? Sometimes he does um, the tick with the fingers without the noise. Okay. Yeah. All right. Rarely. Rarely, but it happens every once in a while. Do you ever do the noise without the fingers? Sometimes, but very, very rarely. Okay. So they're kind of the same thing. They're kind of, they kind of happen at the same time. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you talked about a couple of different times when this, this happens more often. Like you said, looking at animals, watching a movie, those kinds of things makes it a little worse for you. We're looking at things like these trees or these plants over there. That makes it worse? That makes it the same. Okay. Makes it the same. What about when you see other people do it? Does that make you want to do it? No. No? Okay. All right. What about hearing the sound? Like if you hear, hear a sound, does that trigger it? Does that make it happen? Yeah, it makes it happen every single time when I hear a very loud noise. It happens when you hear a very loud noise, it, it happens? Or any noise. Or any noise? Okay. All right. So one of the things we're going to do today is to try to teach you... Um, how to control the, control that movement a little okay. bit, okay? Now the first thing we're gonna do is, if we're gonna teach you how to control it, is we have to watch, let you know when it's happening, all right? We have to teach you to notice when it's happening. And the first part of that is to actually think really hard about what you do when you're doing this movement. So pretend I can't see, okay? Pretend I can't see anything, my eyes don't work. And I want you to tell me with your words what you do when you're doing this movement with your fingers. We'll just focus on your fingers for now. So tell me what you're doing when you're doing that movement with your fingers. Okay, I kind of like go like this. It happens when I usually look at an animal, watch a movie, and look at right. we know other We know when it happens. Now I want you to tell me what your fingers are doing when you start doing it. So use your words. I can't see, okay? Pretend I'm not, my eyes are closed. Oh, pretend I can't see, right? Pretend I can't see. And, but I forgot what you said. Okay. I want you to try to tell me what you're doing with your fingers. What are your fingers doing when you do that like movement? They, I put this finger onto the thumb. Okay, so you put your middle finger onto the thumb. Yeah, but in, yeah, but in this one... I kind of like put this one okay. onto the thumb, and then I put this one onto the other thumb, thumb then, then this one, and then this one. Okay. See, here it's a taller stack, and here it's a longer stack. Okay. Then I press through very hard, but this one, I like boom. Okay. And like press very hard, and it's still, the middle finger is still. Still on, like this. Um, but in this one, it's a little different because both of them are right. still on. 
But then this one breaks, and then this one breaks, and this one breaks. Okay. And it makes a noise. Right? Yeah. Okay. Do you like that noise? Is there something about that noise you like? No. Okay. Do you always start with one finger on your thumb? No, I start with both of them. I mean, like for one hand? Yeah. There's always one finger on each thumb? Yeah. Okay. Is it always this finger, or is it always this finger? Well, it's always this it's always this finger. Okay. All right. And then the other ones come on top of the one that's on top of your thumb? Yeah. Okay. I don't kind of, I don't do it like, I don't do it like that. I do it like, like that. Okay. When I finish doing it, my fingers remain like this. This one remains like that and this one remains like this. Okay. So you still have them down a little bit. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, that's good. Now, what do you, where, where are your hands sitting when you do this? Are they, are they down on your sides? Yeah, when I do that, they're still, they're, they're always in the middle. They're always in front of my face. Okay, so they're always up here. Yeah. Okay, they're always in front of your face. Only rarely there's, they are down. Sometimes they're down. But most of the time when they're down, I do it with only one. Okay. So if they're up, both hands will happen. If they're down, it might be just one. Yeah, but it might be both when there is like, when I'm sitting, when I put them down, there may be both. And even when I put them up, there may be one. Okay. So not always <coughs> is it both when you're up. I know. Just a lot of when times. When I'm medium, it's both down one only or both of them. Okay, good, good. <coughs> All right. So, when let's say your hands are down at your side. Okay, so put your hands down in your lap like this. If you're going to start doing this, let's say a big dog starts coming into this room right now. What would you do? Um, oh, what, what's the first thing you just did there? I put my my fingers here, and then after that, I'd kind of like go like this. Oh, but that's not the first thing you did. I said a big dog walks in the room. What was the first thing you did? Look at it. And then what? Then your arms came up, right? And then okay. this finger goes there, and then I then you start doing wash them all until, and then I kind of I rarely do this, and then actually I go like. Like that. Okay, right. So the first part of that was that your hands go up, all right? Yeah. So the first part of this finger thing is that your hands come up, all right? And then the second part is your fingers go down, and then the other ones come on top, and then you start going like this. Yeah. Right? And then the last part is when they remain like that. They remain like this, right. All right? Okay. So... Let's think again. A dog walks in the room. Yeah. What do you do? First, I my hands are on the lap, and then I lift the, the dog up. comes in. All right. The dog comes in. Your fingers are pointed out. And then boom. Right. Okay. I do that a lot. You do that a lot. Okay. Now, how does? Do you know that's going to happen? Yes. How do you know? Because whenever there's an animal. I know that I do it. Okay. Can you tell in your body that it's going to happen? Do you feel it that it's going to happen? Does it feel funny in your hands or does it feel it funny in your stomach? Or it, it doesn't feel funny anywhere. Does it feel tight? Do you feel like an itchy feeling or any kind of feelings in your hand? That says, okay, Octavian, do it. No, it just, my body just tells me to do it. And how does it tell you to do it? It lifts up my hands and then it makes me do that. Okay, just lifts them up. No, actually my feeling tells me to your do it. Your feeling tells you to do it. Okay, how does your feeling, where's your feeling at? I know it's do all the way down here and tells me to lift them up. Feel, you have a feeling in your hand yeah. to do it? That when you see animals or a movie that makes <coughs> that feeling show Not up? anything. Okay, all right, good. That's great. So... There are a couple ways that you know that this is going to happen, right? Yeah. One way is what? Okay, one way is that when I know an animal is going to come, 
I, I know that I'm going to do it. Right. So you see an animal, you see a movie, it's going to be more likely to happen then. Yeah. Another way is, is that feeling you get in your hands. Yeah. Right? And then another way is right before you start to do this, your hands come up. Right? I know. When I tried to block myself not to do it, I fold my hands so I could lock. Mm -hmm. My fingers like this. That's a good idea. So I could lock them. That's a good idea. Because in Mr. Pinero's class, we had to, and Mr. Aldez's class as well, to show her that we're ready, we had to fold her hands. And I had no ticks at all. Really? It was like, like that the whole time. Okay, that's great. Okay, so here's what. This is going to be called your finger tick. All right, we're going to call this your finger tick. We're going to call that feeling you have in your hand, and we're going to call when your hands go up and your fingers touch your thumb, we're going to call those your warning signs, okay? That tells you the tick is coming. So your warning signs are when your hands go up, when your fingers start to press onto your thumbs, and when you feel that feeling in your hands. Those are your warning signs, okay? Can you tell me what your warning signs are? This. What are you doing? What? When I pull my fingers off. Up, and then your fingers press. Yeah. Or when you have what in your hands? Or when I have my feeling. Now you're feeling in your hand, that's right. Okay, so let me ta stop for a second. So that part was the response description part of treatment. And essentially what we were doing was having him describe in as much detail as he could what the sequence of the movement might be, all right? So we're watching a couple different things at that point. You know, we, one, I didn't go into the, the sound that he makes. He said he makes a sound a lot of times with that. But because the sound was happening at times other than when the movement was happening, we'll treat those as two separate ticks. If the sound was only ever happening when the movement was happening, we would do all at one time. But they're happening at separate times, so we're really only dealing with the, the movement at this point. All right. Now, when we're talking about warning signs. We don't want to get too hung up on the presence of animals, the movies, those kinds of things. Um, we'll deal with that, but we'll deal with that in the functional assessment piece. We're just doing habit reversal now. The, 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 what we're looking for in terms of uh, warning signs for the habit reversal piece are the this premonitory urge, that feeling in his hands that he's describing, and we're looking for the earliest parts of the tick movement that tell him the tick is happening. Now, you might have wanted to just do the, the, or the, the war, one of the warning signs of coming up to your face, but as I'm watching him, that's not the only time he does it. He, he was down here below doing, doing it some at the side of his hands. So one of the other things I added in as a warning sign was the, the initial movement of the finger to the thumb, because that happens, seems to be happening almost every time the tick is occurring, whether their hands are up here or whether the hands are down here. Yeah. Do you like doing this? Yeah. Do you? Why do you like doing it? Because it gives me some more clues of the animal. Gives you some clues of the animal? Okay. And what about when you're watching a movie? It gives me some clues of the movie. What about when nothing's happening and you're doing it? It's just like when I look at a tree, it shows me the height. Okay. Okay. Be careful when you're asking questions. Okay. Um, all right. Do you feel better after you do this? Yeah, much better. Okay. Do you feel like uncomfortable before you do it? I feel good both times before I do it and after. Okay. All right. All right. So let's keep going. All right. Next, what we're going to do is I want you to do something for me. I'm going to try to teach you to be more aware of this, to notice when it's happening, okay, of this finger stuff. All right. So I want you to do me a favor. We're going to talk about some stuff, all right? It's not going to have anything to do with this finger movement. We're just going to talk about some stuff. And what I want, what I want to do is while we're, doing, while we're talking, I'm going to do this, okay? And whenever I do your finger tick, I want you to stop and go like this. Raise your finger and tell me that you noticed. All right? Can you do that? All right. So this is, you know what you're supposed to do? Yeah. 
Okay, this is really easy. All right, yeah, but you got to. Now let's demonstrate how we're going to do it. Right, it's a good idea. Okay, so I go like, yeah, you got me. All right, awesome. Okay, so what grade are you in? Um, good. I'm in, I just, today was the last day of second grade, and I'm, I'm going to third grade. Good, you got it. <laughs> awesome, nice job. You know what? I have a son who's eight years old. And today was his last day of school, too. What grade was he in? He was in second grade. He's, he's finishing second grade today. It was his last day of second grade. And he'll start third grade. Oh, you're too good. How'd you know I was doing that? You had your finger up before I even started. I just knew that you were running your hands up. To you know it. what, though, Octavian? You do the same thing. You do the same thing. Your hands go up before you start, too. And that's how you know. Your body's telling you you're getting ready to do it. So that's great. All right? Okay, here we go. Let's keep going. You ready? Ah, yeah. oh, you caught me. <laughs> so uh, where are you going to, uh, are you going to the same school next year? I'm not, um, yes. Are you? Okay. Do you Until like Until I get to fifth grade, I'm going to go to. Ah, oh, you got me again. That's good. <laughs> Uh, until you go to the fifth grade, you're in the same, same. Oh, dang, you're just too fast. All right. So at this point, we look at it and say, okay, he's got it. You know, he, he, he can detect it in me. Now the question is, can he detect it in himself? And so we're going we're gonna to do a couple things. First of all, he's not doing a lot of it. All right. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. I mean, if, if the children aren't doing, doing a lot of it in session, then we'll, we'll have to do something else. And I'll stop and see if we have to do that. But, Okay. Octavian, here's the next, we're done doing that, okay? The next thing I want you to do, and this is a little bit harder, is to see if you can catch it in yourself, all right? So here's what I want you to do. If you notice your hands going up to your face, or if you notice your fingers starting to close on your, on your thumb, or if you even start doing it, I want you to let me know. Just raise your finger, okay? <laughs> I don't care if you do it, that's fine, but I just want you to let me know, all right? And if I see you do it, oh, good, nice job, buddy. And, and if, if I see you do it and, and you miss it, then I'll remind you, okay? Does that make sense? All right, so I heard you caught it, awesome. I heard you're going to Romania this year, is that true? Yeah. Now, do you, you, do you know people in Romania? Uh, your fingers are... Uh -huh. There you yeah. go. Raise your finger. That's right. <laughs> do you, who do you know in Romania? Um, my, my cousin. I know every single body of my family. And how many family members do you have there? I don't know. There's too many. Too many? Yeah. Now, did you ever live in Romania? Were you, oh, good job. <laughs> were you born in Romania? No, I was born in Miami. You were born in Miami. Oh, very cool. You got it. You're good at this. Oops, I did it. What would you do? I missed the one. Oh, I did you? Oh, there you go. Oh. <laughs> okay, good. So, yeah, have you ever been to Rom Romania before? Yeah. Really? How many times have you gone? You're doing right there. No, that's not the tick. It wasn't? If I do this, it's not the tick. Oh, but for now, that's how we're going to treat it, okay? Because this puts you at risk. Anytime that you start to go like this, that could turn into yeah, a tick. I rarely do it like that in both. That, that's fine. But if you do both, I want you to raise your finger still. Yeah. Okay? All right. So, um, yeah, have you, you've been to Romania before? Yeah. How many times have you been? Did you do one? I, I didn't did, see it. I was about to. My finger was already going to the... Did you have the feeling in your hand? Yeah. It was already going to finger. It was like up to here. It was going up and crossing. That up is there. awesome. That's something I forgot to say. If you have that feeling in your hands that you have to do it, then let raise your finger too, okay? I know. Okay. So raise your finger when you have the feeling, when your hands go up, or when you start to close your fingers on your thumbs. Oops, okay. I was about to do it. All right, good. Thanks like for letting me that. know. Good. So um, have you traveled anywhere else in the United States? So far, yes, I did. I went once to Indianapolis and to Wisconsin. To I'm from Wisconsin. Wisconsin. You went to Wisconsin? Yeah, Wisconsin Dells. You went to the Wisconsin Dells? Did you get in the water parks? No, it was winter when I went. 
Oh, that's too bad. But we went skiing. You went skiing in Wisconsin? Yeah, but in Indianapolis, I did not. Uh, there's not much to ski on in Indianapolis. In Indiana, no. No, it's pretty flat in Indiana. What did you do in Indianapolis? Well, I played at home. You played at home? I, no, I played at there at some friends' house. I have two kid friends over there. Oh, yeah? One of the biggest... One is Alex, and he's older than me. Mm -hmm. And the, the small one is Nicholas, is, and he's my age. And how did you meet these guys? By traveling. By traveling? Or did, with in the, the airplane. Oh, okay. I couldn't travel by ship because... There's no water. There's no water. There's no water at all up to Indianapolis. I, think you, I don't even know if there's a river that goes through there. I went with the airplane. Yeah. So do you do any sports in the summer? In the summer, yes. You play baseball or anything oh. like that? Oh, good job. You caught it. Nice job. Do you play baseball or anything like that or, or soccer? or? Well, so I go and I usually go to different camps. I don't go to sport camps. Yeah. I go sometimes to nature camp. Oh, cool. To see animals. We pet them. Yeah. Reptiles. Yeah. And also, I also sometimes, I, I'm going to go to the arts camp. Oh, camp cool. This summer. So what's your favorite animal? Well, I have two favorite animals. Really? Harold and dinosaur. Really? Do you have a favorite kind of dinosaur? All of, I like all of the dinosaurs. You like all the dinosaurs? In Milwaukee, we have a museum that, uh, that has a big dinosaur exhibit in it. It's really cool. Can it's I a stegosaurus see? getting eaten by a Tyrannosaurus Rex. And they're as big as they really would be. They're as tall as this room, and they're really cool. Can I see it? Well, I can't show you now because we're not in Milwaukee. We'd have to go there. I want to go to <laughs> It's a really cool museum. And then the Chicago Museum, and Chicago Museum of Natural History has a great dinosaur exhibit. They've got a lot of cool dinosaurs. It dinosaur can't be pictures. existing. No, exhibit, not, not existing. What does exhibit mean? It means that pictures of dinosaurs and real live, not real live dinosaurs, but big dinosaurs that are like stuffed animals almost. Oh, I see. But they really move? They move? Uh, uh. Oh, no, I was... If I, but, oh. but if your fingers come together, I want you to do that. Oh, yeah. All right? You know, if they move, kind of like if they move, are they stuffed animals or robots? These don't move. These aren't robots. I know. But Tyrannosaurus Rex did not exist at the same time with Stegosaurus. Yeah, maybe not. It yeah, might not it be accurate. Tyrannosaurus Rex was in Cretaceous period and... Stegosaurus was in Jurassic. There's only three periods. Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. You know your dinosaurs, don't you? You've I done a lot of reading, all huh? all the dinosaurs in the world. Yeah. So what, what kind of art camps do you go to? I go to only one kind. Yeah? One where I, where I paint and make sculptures. Oh, cool. That's neat. Pretty neat. I sometimes do oil paints. Oil paints smells really bad. Yeah. Yeah, it does smell pretty bad. Do you do watercolors too? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, so at this point, I think he's, he's fairly aware of when he's doing it. He's got some good awareness. Did you catch one? I was about to see. All right, good. You can also see the emergence of the, I mean, you can start to see the urge discussion. You can start to see how that shapes itself. Um, and so at this point, what we would do is switch into the competing response training. All right. So Octavian, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to teach you to do something that can stop you from doing this whenever you feel like you have to do it or whenever you even start to do it. All right. And we're going to call those your, ex the thing that we're going to teach you to do, we're going to call those your exercises. All right. Okay, now I'm keeping my hands like that so I don't do that. No, it's okay if you do it. it. That's okay. Here's what we want to do. We want to come up with something you can do, like something you can do with your hands that will 
make it hard for you to do this, this movement, this, this finger snapping. So listen, listen to my rules. Okay, here are the rules. The thing that we, the exercise that we have you do should be something that when you're doing the exercise, it gets really hard to do this. That's the first part of the rule. The second part of the rule is it should be dumb, something that you can do almost anywhere. All right? The third part of the rule should be, it should be something that you can do for a minute or until that feeling in your hands goes away, whichever takes longer. All right? Like hanging from a bar? That's a good one. So let's think about that. Let's say your hand comes up and you start to do this, and then your exercise that you should do is hang on a bar. Okay? Let's think about that. Can you hang on a bar and do this at the same time? No. No. You'll so you're, fall off. You'll fall off. That's right. That's exactly right. Can you hang on a bar for a minute or until the feeling in your hand goes away? I, yeah, I'll try to hang with my feet because... Well, I know you have to hang with your hands, okay? With my feet, I don't do it because I'm afraid I'll fall right. on my head. Yeah, let's not worry about falling on your head. We won't use your feet. That one won't work because if you're hanging by your feet, then you can do this, all right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, see, that's the first part. Well, so like push-ups. Okay, that's a good one. Let's think about push-ups. So every time you feel like you have to do this, you should start doing push-ups. All right? Yeah. Now let's think about that, though. If you're doing push-ups, can you do this? No. Okay, that's good. So that, it meets that rule. Mm -hmm. Can you do push-ups for a whole minute? I'll try to. Okay, so maybe. What if you're in the swimming pool and you start to do this? Can you do push-ups in the water? No. No, way. it doesn't work, does it? So that Only one probably doesn't I... work. When I'm swimming, or you know, I usually swim like a crocodile, like that. Yeah. And I even swim like a bear. I don't like to do that when I. <laughs> but do you know what? I you you just you just made me think of something. What if you went like this? Well, oops, when I you just felt did like you exercised. That's all right. When you when you when you when, could your exercise be something like this? Try this. Stretch your hands out like this. Hold your fingers really tight together so I can't pull them apart too easy, okay? Like this. Hold them just like that. Now, don't make it too tight that it hurts, but just tight enough that it, you, your fingers won't come apart easily. Can you hold that? Can, well, can you, do, can you keep your hands like this and do this at the same time? No. No? Look. Right. It doesn't work, does it? Okay, so that's the first thing. Can you do this for a minute? Can you hold this for a minute? Can you hold that for a minute, do you think? Okay. Do you think you can do that for a minute? Not for a minute, but a couple of seconds. Well, you've already passed a couple of seconds. I think you can do that for a minute, don't you think? Okay, I'll try. Okay. Do you think you can do that pretty much anywhere? Not anywhere. Where can't you do it? At school. You can't do this at school? You can't sit at your desk and put your hands down like this? Actually, I could. I do it in school when I sit at my desk. I do that. Okay. And and but the place where I really can do it is wait. Thinking is when I go outside. Actually no, when I go to the zoo. You can't do this at the zoo? I could on a bench, but when I go outside at school I can't. Why why not? I can't because I like to do it on the ground and get my hands dirty. Okay, well, let's try this. What if you don't put it down on something? What if you just hold it at your side? Okay, at my side it's okay, but the place where I really can't do it is at the swimming pool. You can't stand in the water and go like this? I could do it, but at the ocean, no, because the waves bother me. Well, they probably would bother you. How often do you go to the ocean? A lot. A lot? Every day? <laughs> Every day? <laughs> Not every day. Not every day, no, I think. No, pretty smile at that. <laughs> you have a crazy smile. No, he's hel you're, you're being helpful. You're thinking everything through, and that's good. But I think right now, this is a pretty good exercise for you. I think this can help stop your, some of your, your, your finger movements. So here's what I want to do. Here's what we, I want you to do from here on out. Every time you feel like you have that feeling in your hands, Every time your fingers come down onto your thumbs, and every time you even uh, 
bring your hands up to your face. Or even when you start to do it, even if you catch yourself doing it, I want you to stop right away and go like this. Put your hands down at your side. That's how right? I'm about to do it. That you, you were about to do it and that's how you did it? Yeah, but my finger got the wrong, got in, in the wrong finger. It got the wrong finger. Okay. All right, that's okay. All right, you ready? So here, I want to show you how it would look. All right? So let's say I'm sitting at school and all of a sudden I notice myself going like this. I would, I would stop and I would put my hands down and then I would hold it for a, about a minute. All right? And then you could stop. And then, well, then, no, not right away. I would ask myself, okay, do I have to keep doing it? Do I have that feeling in my hands? If the answer is yes, then I keep doing it. If the answer is no, then I let my hands go. I know. All right, so that's one time you do it. So it would look like this. Ready? I'm going to go like this. I see a dog walk by, and I go, and then I put my hands down, right? Okay, watch my, this is what I want you to pay attention to right now, okay? Watch my hands go down, yeah. all right? At the end of the minute, I would ask myself, do I still have to do this? Do I have a feeling in my hands that tells me I have to do it? If the answer is no, then I say, okay, I'm done with it for a while. If the answer is yes, then I keep going, all right? That's one time you do your exercise. The second time you would do your exercise, let's say I'm sitting there, and I see a cat walk by. I would go like this. Oh, as soon as I notice my hands go up and my fingers touch, I would go down and I would hold my hands down at the side for a minute or until that feeling went away. All right? Oh, Did you have it? it? Yeah. Good. Put your, like, that's good. Put your hands down at your side. Put your hands down at your side like this. wrong finger. That's fine. Okay, ready? And then... So keep your hands down if you're if I could do this as well. That could do, but that can be a little bit harder if you're doing other things like running or you know, when writing. I run or, I'll do I all I always go like that mm -hmm. and I don't have time to do the ticks. Okay, that's good then. That's good. But I want your exercise to be this. Okay? Okay. Down to the side. Are we gonna do any exercise after we're done talking with that? This is exercise. This is what I mean. This is your exercise. All right. Then another time you would do it is if your hand comes up and you start to touch with your thumb, one of your fingers, and you put it down. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay, yeah. good. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to keep talking, and I want you to do your exercise, your hands down exercise. When do you do your hands down exercise? When should you do it? When I feel the feeling. Right. Or when I catch myself doing it. Right. Or when I feel the the thumb starting to touch with the long finger. Right. Good job. You caught it. Now here we go. You ready? So any one of those times, if you catch it, good job. If you miss it, I'll remind you. Okay? Okay. So what should we talk about now? We've talked about art. We've talked about dinosaurs. We've talked about Romania. We've talked about Indianapolis. What else should we talk about? I don't think I have any. You don't have anything else to talk about? I don't have anything. What, well, okay, what are you going to do this summer, though? You've got a whole summer ahead of you starting today. Oh, I'm going to go home and watch a movie. What movie? What's your favorite movie? A lot of them. Do you have one favorite one? That would name one of your favorite movies. <laughs> dinosaurs. Dinosaurs? I have a feeling you really like dinosaurs. Yeah, and also Nature's Fury. Nature's Fury. And natural Disasters. Natural Disasters, okay. You ever watch movies like Cars or... I do have Cars. Yeah. Did you, is Cars 2 out yet? I heard Cars 2 is going to come out. In theaters? Mm hmm What, they're going to make the discs? I don't know. I don't know when that's going to happen. Do, do you go to the zoo a lot when you're down here? Yeah, I when you're, go when you're to in the zoo. summer. But I usually, when in the summer, I go to vacation. I go to the zoo over there. Oh, okay. And I go here to this zoo a lot as well. Okay. What's your favorite animal to see at the zoo? I ha I like all of them. Yeah, you don't have a favorite exhibit. You don't have a favorite part of the zoo. The parrots are one of my favorites. Why do you like parrots so much? Because they fly a lot. Yeah? Do you have parrots that talk to you? No, only at Parrot Jungle. 
I don't go there anymore. I have to start going there again. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. When I go to the zoo, I think my favorite part is in the Milwaukee Zoo. I think my favorite part is the lion and tiger cages. I think those are the, those, those areas are pretty cool. They, they're not really in cages. No, they're you're right. in the open spaces. Right. You're right. That's exactly right. Sometimes in the winter, though, it's too cold for the lions to be outside, so they're inside. In, in no, in the winter in Miami, they stay outside because of the fur they have. Yeah, and you're warm enough down here to do that. Yeah. We're, we're pretty cold in Milwaukee. It gets really cold and snows a lot, and lions aren't used to cold. Well, Milwaukee, where's Milwaukee? It's in Wisconsin. Oh, yeah, is there, was that a zoo? There's a big zoo in Milwaukee. It's a really good zoo. I know. Is it bigger than Animal Kingdom? I doubt it. I don't think so. I know, but Miami Zoo is the world's biggest zoo in the world. It's smaller than Animal, than animal Kingdom, but they have more animals than in Animal Kingdom. Really? Yeah. Did you go to Animal Kingdom a lot? No, I don't. I went only once. Okay. All right, good. <coughs> Wow, what was your favorite thing to see there? Pretty much I liked all of them. Yeah? You liked the, all the animals? Yeah. Are there, there any animals you don't crazy, like? Crazy rides. I yeah. Like, yeah. Are there any animals you don't like? There's some. I don't like flies. I really hate flies. You hate flies? Yeah. Because they stuck your blood. <laughs> You sure you're not talking about mosquitoes, or do you have different kinds of flies down here? Mosquitoes. These are the bugs I really hate. You hate you hate mosquitoes. Yeah. All right. Okay. So what else are you gonna do this summer? You're gonna you're gonna go to the zoo a little bit maybe, and you're yeah, gonna go to Romania. I, vi I visited only one zoo in Romania, which was Brela Zoo. It was a it was one of the smallest zoos in the world. Yeah. How long does it take it to fly to, to Romania? A lot. We have to fly, we have to take two or three airplanes. Really? There's three options how you could get to Romania. You could go from Miami to New York and then from New York across uh, the Atlantic. Uh, 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 oh. uh, use your exercise. Uh. What's your exercise? Remember? And then I. That's good. No, that's good. You did a good job. You're doing your exercise. That's great. And then. After that, you have to fly over the whole ocean on a bunch and over a bunch of land, and then after that, and then after that, you land in Bucharest. You have to stay one night in the airplane. Okay. The other option is from Miami all the way to Paris okay. across the ocean, and then from Paris to Romania. Oh, okay. Are you you're flying into Bucharest? That's where you land? Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Is that where all your family is? No, it's, it's a village close to Bucharest. Okay. Like, Otopen is the only village that has... Your hands. Is your feeling gone? Yeah. Do you feel like you have to do it anymore? No. Okay, that's okay. Then you can let it go. And then, and then after... Now, this is the last option you could do. You could take three airplanes, Miami to New York, and then New York all the way to Poland, and then from Poland to Bucharest. Wow, you've worked out every route, and haven't I you? I stayed in Poland for a little while. Really? What city? Um, Remember? What? Is it Warsaw? Warsaw, yes. Okay. I went to Warsaw Zoo. Did you? Yeah. It was smaller than Miami Zoo, but it was still pretty big. Okay. Very cool. All right. Just keep doing it. If you remember if you do what are your when when should you do your exercises? When I feel like doing the ticks. Mm -hmm. And and even if I catch me myself doing them. Right. Or, or I start to do my Right. Thing. Exactly. Okay, so you keep doing that. I'm gonna talk a little bit. To everybody else. So one of the hard parts of, of habit reversal when you're doing it is uh, his tics are, are happening very infrequently, which is actually great as a, as a therapist, I mean, in terms of your, your work. Uh, but when they're happening much more frequently, you're constantly having to, what's he doing? Okay, don't forget your exercise, okay? 
do your exercise. Yeah. All right, no, down at your side, remember? Like this, yeah. Okay, one of the harder parts is to remember uh, to kind of keep tracking what he's doing, what you're talking about, and switching back and forth. I mean, it's really, you're, 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 you've got to deal with divided attention yourself as you're doing this. If you're not good as a therapist at dealing with splitting your focus, you're not going to do well as a therapist with this treatment because you've kind of got to watch multiple things at one time. Is your feeling gone? Yeah. Okay. I'm still okay, good. That. Good. That's great. Okay. So any questions at this point as we're going through this? Yeah. I'm wondering, um, especially for younger kids, and this might apply to kids who also have ADHD, is it kind of difficult to tell the difference between just general fidgeting and squirming and an actual tick? Oh, yeah. Yeah, generally. Um, you know, here, the question here I would have legitimately is, is this really a tick or not? You know, this thing. I'm not sure, to be quite honest with you. It could very easily be, be a stereotypy. Um, which and, and the reason is because he's experiencing so much pleasure when it's happening. It's almost like an excitement thing um, in the way he's describing it. So that that's, tends to make me think more of a stereotypy than tick. We treat it the same way ultimately, uh, but but it makes me wonder as to whether or not there's really a tick there. I mean, he has ticks. There's no doubt about this. But the question is whether this is actually a stereotypy or a tick. Um, but in terms of ADHD, I mean, if it's a general fidgetiness. It, sometimes that can get hard. The distinction is, is there a stereotypic pattern to it? If you, you know, general fidgetiness for an ADHD is more like, think of it as motoric overspill. It's just sort of like random, you know, just there's not a real pattern to it. Here, there's a clear pattern to it. I mean, you can see when it starts the pattern that it follows. It's, it's a pretty clear kind of pattern, and that would make you think more of, more of a tick rather than just ADHD motoric overspill. So... All right, so now what we would talk with you, now keep doing it if you feel like you have to do it, all right? Then we, at this point, we'd, we'd bring the parents into this and we'd say, okay, so you watch what we've done and what, what we need you to do is to do two things. Remind him to use his exercise if you see him doing the tick or starting to do the tick, um, which means his fingers come down or his hands come up um, or you actually see him doing it. Remind him to do his exercise and I encourage him to hold it for a minute or until the feeling goes away. And remember, when you do that, the only thing you need to say to him, Octavian, don't forget your exercise. That's it. No, no badgering, no, nothing like that. Uh, no, not even talking about ticks, really. Just more of a reminder, don't forget your exercise. And if you see him doing the exercise, so if you're like watching TV and you look over, he's watching dinosaurs and, and he goes like this and, and then brings his hands down and you see that, make a huge deal out of it. Uh, and, and praise him a lot. Let him know what a great job he did if he, if he does his exercises like he should. And you'll just be doing that from here on out. All right? Do you have any questions about yeah, that? What about just pointing? For example, he talks to me and he starts and I just point. That's fine. Without saying anything. If that's what you want to do. As long as he's not interpreting that as you getting angry at him. As, you know, as long as he understands that that's just your reminder. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right? You know what you need to do? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do that. When you what? <clears throat> have the feeling or when my hands are <laughs> Got it, right? There you go. You started to, what, what were you doing? Can you tell everybody what you did? Because I don't think they saw it. I was, I was just trying to demonstrate. But what did you, why did you do this? Why did you go into your exercises? Because I thought I was going to do it for real. Okay, you felt like you had to do it. Or so, when I put my thumb on the finger. Right. Or, when I already catch myself doing it. Right. So you'll notice one of the things I've been doing, and I do this intentionally, is I keep restating the rules. And I want to make sure he gets it. He understands exactly why he's doing what he's doing. So there's a lot of recitation about this kind of thing um, over and over again. All right. That was awesome. Questions about anything you saw today? Um, any last questions. What were the things we were talking about earlier? Because those were actually points I wanted to make, but... What I said is that I could see the effectiveness of the sessions and all that because it empowers right. the student. You, you're taking it in a path that they're making, a, giving them a solution, and they are internalizing yeah. everything because you're working with the inside, not only the tick that you can see, right. but what his feelings are and sensations. Right. One of, the, one of the things, we, we talked about this a little bit earlier, just 
when the cameras were off. One of the things that's actually um, interesting about what happens when people go through this treatment are people who do really well in this treatment. Now, Octavian, I forgot to tell you, from here on out, any time this happens, your exercises should happen, okay? So I'm going to be watching right here, all right? <laughs> all right. Uh, one of the things that we, we notice um, when kids do well on this treatment, you know, a lot of times the parents will say things like, yeah, his ticks are better, but I got to tell you, that's not the real benefit of what, we've, what we find. The real benefit of what we find is my, my kid now feels like he's in control of his own body. He feels more in control of himself. And, and you know, that's just much more valuable even than the reduction in the ticks. And it took me a while to really understand what that meant, you know, because most of us, if we have control over our bodies, we can't comprehend what it's like to not have control over our bodies. You know, we, it, we, we don't have that frame of reference. So imagine you blurting something out, the, that first thing that comes to mind, and there's no hope of slowing that down. Imagine what that would be like, not just to, to deal with when it happens, but to deal with the fear of it happening. You know, just imagine how that would be. Like, you don't know where it's coming from. You don't know when it's happening next. You know, that's a very kind of scary thing to, to have happen, especially when it's happening at a young age. It just sort of pops out. And then imagine for the first time, sometime in 15 years, if you're like a 15-year-old, you realize that, oh, wait a minute. I, I do have a little bit of say. You know, I, 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 there is some predictability to this. There is a little bit of control to it. Just even getting a, a tiny bit of control you know, when you felt there was never any, that's a pretty powerful thing, I think. And I think that's one of the benefits that this treatment actually gives that we've not quantified, we've not measured, but we've heard reported a lot of times. It's just that, that feeling of control that, that starts to develop as a result of this, which is great. So, any other kind of questions? Methodological, yeah. I have one question. So it made me, this treatment made me think about, you know, in general, you're teaching this awareness of a physiological response. Mm -hmm. Do you know if people have tried to use like biofeedback or anything like that? The biofeedback, neurofeedback kind of thing, um, people have done it, but essentially what, they're, what they do is habit reversal. I mean, you know, it's just the, the biofeedback, the neurofeedback is used to it, supposedly enhance the habit reversal. It's actually not clear that it does, and for a couple reasons. One, we're not sure what the, the feedback target would be. Like, we haven't found the biological marker for the premonitory urge. We don't know that it's muscle tension in the area. We don't know that it's a particular brain wave. We, don't, we just don't know what that is. So that, that's part of what makes it difficult. Um, so th really, the neurofeedback, biofeedback, although I could see how it could be useful, right now I don't think we have the appropriate targets to really be able to do that. It's just my guess. And I'm not sure it would add anything necessarily, but it could. I can see theoretically how it could. Yeah. So I think we spoke a little bit about this when I came up to you individually, but um, how how would how could these types of um, interventions be adapted to kids that are not nonverbal and things right. like that? So the the question that I get every time I give this talk is, does this work with kids with autism and developmental disabilities? You know, Asperger, so on and so forth. The answer is, in terms of data, I have no idea because it's never been tested in this population. However, um, it's interesting to remember that Azrin developed this treatment based on his work with people with developmental disabilities. So it's one, of those, it's one of those weird situations where we've actually extended a treatment from developmental disabilities to typically developing. Usually we try to cram typically developing population treatment into the developmental disabilities population. This one actually went the other way. He did this when he was treating people for repetitive behavior problems. And now think, about, now think about this from a developmental disability. Somebody with profound mental retardation, profound developmental disabilities, if they were doing something repetitive, what would you do to treat them? What you would do was first of all, get them to notice when it was happening, teach them to do a behavior that wasn't what they were doing, and then you'd praise it like crazy, or throw M&Ms or tokens or whatever it might be at them like crazy, it would be a basically differential reinforcement contingency. Like a DRI. Yeah, DRI, differential reinforcement of incompatible behavior contingency. And that's exactly what we're doing. It's just people are self-administering it. In a person with developmental disabilities, profound developmental disabilities, 
they wouldn't be self-administering it. It would be very much guided from their environment. Their, their caseworkers, their staff members would be the ones doing most of the lifting. You know, they would be doing, it would be much more intensive as well. The sh it would be much more of a shaping process than would be as we do it here. We rely on rules to control most of our behavior. You know, our, most of human behavior is rule governed in a lot of ways. In developmental disabilities, if you don't have that language ability, you, the rule governance sort of disappears and you, you rely more on direct contingency control. And so it would be much more hands-on kind of experience, I think. It'd be similar principles, though. Any other questions? Last thoughts? It's an exhaustingly long day, I know. <laughs> um, so thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thanks. Thank you.